GM, 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 what's up, clubbers? In the previous video, what we had discussed was how do we create a Dutch auction smart contract? In this video, we're going to use that functionality of Dutch auction and use that to sell an NFT from an NFT collection. The collection can have as many items as possible. It doesn't really matter to us. What we are going to focus on is how do we price uh, the items such that the price keeps reducing for every new user. But before we get started, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to this channel. Also leave a comment, you know, that really helps me out with the algorithm and stuff. And I try to read all the comments that I get. Uh, so that's a very simple way to get some message across to me. And if you have any specific question, come join my Discord server. There are a bunch of people just like you and me who try to help each other out. All right, with that said, let's get started. Now, some of you have asked what is a Dutch auction? So Dutch auction is basically an inverse of a normal auction. In the normal auction, what you do is that the price starts from zero and it keeps increasing till the point where there is only one bidder remaining. In the Dutch auction, uh, we have this thing in reverse. We start from a very high price and then we keep on reducing till we find somebody who is willing to accept that offer. And this is what the code we had also written. If you see here, the auction had a start price, which was 5 ETH. It had an end price, which was 2 ETH. And what we were doing was we were reducing the price by 0.01 ETH for every minute that was passed. It's a fairly small code. You can just read it. It's just 35 lines. It's nothing rocket science there. Now, what we are going to do in this video is we are going to use this functionality to figure out the price. And then based on that price, we will start selling the NFTs. So the first one, the first person to, to buy will basically end up uh, buying at the highest price and then it will start going down. We will let the users mint as many NFTs as they want in our specific example. But of course, you can add those constraints by yourself. What I'm going to focus on is how do we set the price dynamically based on this Dutch auction mechanism. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to open Open Zeppelin, the wizard by Open Zeppelin, select ERC721, fill in these details, make sure that the NFT is mintable. Uh, once you're happy with these settings, just open it in Remix. Once the contract has opened in Remix, uh, just go back here and copy all these immutable variables and just paste them here. Now for your own NFT project, you can uh, play around with these. Uh, I'm not going to touch these for this one, uh, but you can of course change these and the functionality will still remain the same. Another thing that we can add over here is uh, a duration. This duration I've set to 300 minutes and I've not set it immutable uh, because otherwise there's some issue in the constructor. Uh, but yeah, once you set this duration, what you need to do next is go to the constructor and copy these two lines. Uh, and paste them here in the constructor itself. So what we do is we add a starting time and an ending time. And the ending time depends on the duration uh, that we have set over here. So I set 300 minutes. So uh, the price will go from 5 ETH to 2 ETH in 300 minutes or 5 hours. So with every minute, it will reduce 0 0.01 ETH. So with every hour, it will reduce 0 0.6 ETH until we reach the point of 2 ETH, all right? The next thing that I want is to use this function called price, uh, because this is the function that we will use uh, to determine what is the price at the moment uh, the, the transaction has come, the mint transaction has been received. So I'm just gonna copy and paste that method just like that. One thing that you need to make sure is if you're not using minutes as the, du as the duration to reduce price, uh, you need to appropriately divide this thing by uh, whatever number. So if you're using hours, you divide it by 3600. If you're using days, you divide by 86400 and so on and so forth. So the, the, the value that we receive, uh, the difference between block dot timestamp and start at will be in seconds. So just convert it into an appropriate unit. And the next thing that I want is in the safe mint function, the function that we use for minting the NFT, uh, we want to remove the only owner because we want to let public mint it and change this to a payable function. I also want to add a max limit, uh, which is basically the maximum supply of NFTs that uh, we want to use. So I'm going to make that immutable and it will be uh, max underscore supply. Uh, let me just set to 10 
for our testing but in the real world you can of course set it to 10,000 or whatever number next we go back to the safe mint function and now we start adding our requirements so in the safe mint the first thing that I want to require is that the message dot value should be greater than or equal to the price which is present at that point so uh, we just write msg dot value should be greater than or equal to the price which is currently the price otherwise we just write not enough ether cent another thing that we should of course add is that the token id should not be greater than the max supply to do that uh, we already have figured out the token id uh, so we are going to add another require statement which basically says that token id should be less than max supply so if token id is 9999 uh, that is still less than 10000 we will go ahead increase the token id and mint another token and of course in the underscore safe mint what i want to do is add one over here so for zero token id we will mint first token id for token id 9999 uh, when the current token id is 9999 uh, the required statement will work uh, and we will be minting the 10,000th nft and then when the token id is 10,000 it will never be less than 10,000 or max supply so this works out fine uh, another thing that i want to add is in the required statement i want to add uh, that if you're exceeding the token limits, uh, the max supply, uh, we want to give you an error. No more items left. Okay, so I've added the semicolons, the appropriate semicolons. And before I uh, go ahead, I just want to change the max supply to I don't know, three. Let me just go ahead and compile this. And the compilation works without any problem. Uh, one thing that I have not added in this specific uh, function is in this specific contract is the function to withdraw and uh, this function will be only owner function. Alright, I have written the withdraw function and I am going to compile again. Alright, so now I go and select my token over here and I deploy my token. Great, deployment has worked. Uh, now let me just select some another um account and let me get the current price what is the current price the current price price is 5 ETH uh, which will be 5000 Fini all right and uh, I want to mint uh, mint one NFT for myself so I click on save mint and the mint goes through and just like that we have minted an NFT but if we have waited, if we had waited for a little while, uh, what we would have seen is that the price would have changed. Right now it shows 5 ETH. If I wait for a while and keep refreshing the price as I'm doing again and again and again, uh, you can see that it has changed to uh, 4.99 ETH. So this time, uh, if I want to mint again, I just put, need to put 4 point, actually 4,990 Fini uh, and press save mint once again and this time with just 4.99 ETH I was able to mint another NFT the price had sort of reduced now what you can use this for is to figure out what should be the correct floor price uh, for your project uh, what projects end up doing is that they keep a record of how much ETH every user has given so that they can later on refund that ETH. We can keep a track of all those things in a mapping in our smart contract and then when people come to ask for refund we basically subtract the lowest price at which the uh, NFT was sold and return the remaining ETH back to them. But this is, this is it like this is how you basically allow users to mint NFTs uh, from your smart contract using a Dutch auction mechanism. Now let's say if you wanted to add, uh, let people mint, let's say more than one and you wanted like uh, you in 256 amount over here, uh, then what you would have needed was you would have just multiplied the amount by the price and then figured out what is the correct ETH the user needs to send. Uh, another thing that you can do is have limits over here that a certain wallet cannot mint more than let's say 10, 20, whatever. And you can put those limits again in the save mint function. The secret sauce of all this is this price function, 
which returns a price based on the current block timestamp. Now Ethereum generally takes 13 to 15 seconds to mine a block. So this uh, price will sort of change four times in a minute, which is not ideal because uh, the price may vary uh, for user because we are changing the price every minute. But if we were to change the price every hour, this would have been a very simple thing for us to do. We would have just changed minutes to hours over here and 60 to 3600 over here and every hour the price would reduce by 0 0.01 and users would have much more certainty uh, before minting an NFT. This would though work great with uh, chains which have smaller block times like Polygon. Now we have already minted uh, two NFTs. Uh, so let me just go ahead and try to mint one more. Uh, but I want to understand what is the price right now. The price that is available is 4.96 ETH. All right. So let me just send, let me be sneaky and send 4940. 4.94 ETH is what uh, I'm going to send this time and mint it. And this time you'll see that I received an error because I'm trying to send lower amount than what is required. Uh, and if I click the price button again, it is still 4.96 and I was sending 4.94. It should turn to 4.95 now, which it has. Let me just increase the font size. And you can see that it has changed to 4.95 now. So now if I send, uh, let's say 4.950, this time the safe mint should work and it has worked for us. But the code has only a supply of three. Uh, so if I try to mint one more at, let's say 10 E, all right, I will get an error because there are no more items left. And this is what the error also says. So this is how you basically use a Dutch auction. Now, why will you want to use a Dutch auction uh, for selling your NFTs? The biggest reason is that it helps reduce gas wars. What happens is people who are, who value your NFTs more than others, they are eager to jump in at higher rates and thus uh, reducing the number of items left and receiving an item for sure for them at a nominal gas rate. So a lot of people are not looking to mint and flip quickly, which is why this sort of helps. If you also add the refund mechanism in the smart contract, more people will be willing to use it because they know that whatever the floor price is, they will receive their NFT at that rate by just getting a refund of the difference. Another reason is to figure out what should be the ideal mint price. Let's say you have a very hyped project and you uh, want to sell it at whatever the best price that you can. Uh, instead of guessing that price, you set like a 10 ETH mint price and then you keep on reducing it by some amount till you know all the items are sold. At that point, hopefully users would have bought all your NFTs at the rate at which they actually value it. Kind of also incentivizes holders rather than people who are just looking to quickly flip uh, the NFT. If you feel like the, it is useful for something else as well, please let me know in the comments down below. That is it. This is how you use a Dutch auction to sell your NFTs from the smart contract, the primary NFT. You can also use a Dutch auction for secondary sales by creating a different smart contract for each sale. If you're interested in learning that, please leave a comment here in my on my video. And I, if enough people ask for it, I will add a video on how do you sell an NFT? How do you resell an NFT uh, using a Dutch auction? Thank you so much for watching the video. Uh, please make sure to hit that like button if you like the video. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you're new and you haven't subscribed. I try to read all the comments, so please leave a comment if you have any. Or join the Discord server if you have any specific questions. A lot of people are there who are trying to help each other out. I hope to see you again next week. Hopefully, I'll make a video on proxies and how do you create upgradable smart contracts. So please do check out uh, the channel next week once again. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.